Now we'll fix up our UI so it looks more like this Wordle keyboard we see here. So in keyboard row, let's center the alignment. So in row, I'll go main axis alignment and choose center. And now let's also wrap these in containers and we can then give those containers a fixed size and decorate them. So right click text, wrap with a container. And the first thing is, let's give them some size. So I want a fixed size, but I want that to be based on the size of the device that we're working on, so we don't have an overflow error. So we need to grab the dimensions of the device. So I'll use media query dot of context size. So I can only call this once we have an instance of a build context. So here I'm calling it in the build method. So let's return that into a variable named size. So first of all, the width. So we have about 10 letters in each row. So each letter should be less than one tenth of the width. So we could go size dot width times 0.1. But we also want to have a little bit of a gap between each key and also the enter in the back will be slightly larger. So let's create this at 0.85. So that gives us a little bit of leeway to put some padding around. And let's give this some height. 0.09. Now let's add some color to that container just so we can see it being built. We'll remove that color later. So here let's make the enter and back slightly bigger. So we need to check whether the key is the enter or back. So we can create a condition that says if e.key is equal to enter or e.key is equal to back, then let's return a size of 0.13. Otherwise, just a regular size width here. So the question mark, the ternary operator, if this is true, we'll return here. If this is false, whatever's after the colon. We can now see the enter and back are now a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's also put some padding around the container. So right click, wrap with padding, and let's make this padding really small. So we'll go size dot width times 0 0.006. So put in a really small value. And because we're accessing the size through media query here, it can't be a const. Now let's center the text in the containers, right click, wrap within a center. We've now centered all the texts. Let's also create a splash effect for each of these keys. We can do that by using the inkwell widget. And in addition to creating a splash effect, we can also call a function each time one of these keys are tapped by using on tapped. So we'll be using that shortly to make our keyboard work. Now, if we do a hot reload, if I tap these keys, we can't see any splash effect happening. And the reason for that is we need a material widget as an ancestor, which we do have in this case, but in between, we have a widget with an opaque graphic, which is blocking our splash effect. So to fix that, that's easy. We can just right click and wrap this with a material. So now we have a material as its parent and nothing in between. And now if we click, we can see the splash effect. Okay, cool. So that is looking good. Let's also round these corners. So we can see in Wordle that each key has a slightly rounded corner. To do that, we can wrap the container in a clip R rect, and we can go border radius, border radius, circular, and that'll clip the corners. Awesome, so here we can see each key now has slightly rounded corners.